What's going on, everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here, and I am here with my very good new friend, Mike Adams. Mike and Mike's Guitar Bar out of Seattle, Washington, buddy. It is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Sean. Yes. I'm thrilled. I can't believe you asked me over uh, to hang out, uh, talk shop, make goofy voices, and play some really incredible amps. Yeah, that's the main focus of what we've got going on here today. If you haven't guessed, we are going to be checking out the new Orange Crush bass amps we got the 25, the 50, and the 100 to check out today. Uh, we got to hang out a few weeks ago with the one and only Glenn Hughes. Oh, that man. That was so much fun. He was a character. <laughs> oh, he was great. Though. Screaming from the moment he walked in the studio. Uh, every minute of it, a, every minute of it a joy. Yes. A complete uh, uh, and self-contained joy. Each joy was separate from the last. Uh, but uh, immensely more joyful, yeah, I would think. He's, absolutely. He's, he's, a, he's a card. Well, he's a, a he's a legend, and he happens to play Orange Amps, so we had the ultimate uh, responsibility of making him enjoy these new amplifiers, and I think we did a, a pretty fair job. And uh, You made him enjoy those I amps. I made him enjoy those amps. I wouldn't say I made him enjoy because... You backed Glenn Hughes into a corner. I might have. <laughs> this is, like, completely redesigned from their original uh, intentions of the Crush series. These are solid state amplifiers. Now, I, I know, like, you're probably thinking solid state poo-poo, possibly, maybe, sorta, kinda, could be. Well, these are something completely different. First off, they're completely analog, 100%, mm. from the front end to the speaker. There's not much other than digital in there, except for maybe the tuner. Uh, that's right, these Ooh, have yeah. these have built-in tuners. There's a, a ton of different features that we're gonna check out today and we're gonna go over, so uh, why don't we start doing that right now? First and foremost, you have the little guy right here. You have the 50 and the 100. They share similar uh, front ends. They have the master volume and a three-band EQ on that with a fully parametric, fully parametric, mid-range control. I'm sorry, did you? Did you say fully parametric? Fully parametric. Well, I, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, I'll tell you how you feel <laughs> about that. You feel great about that because by fully parametric, you get to fine tune the mid-range to your liking. And as you hmm. can see, I've chosen to play my Squire Bass 6 because it's probably the uh, best playing bass instrument that I have, much mm. of which the work was done by this man right here. So thank you for that. Oh, and he's please. chosen this, this beautiful, beautiful, 1973, was it? 73. 73, 73 P-Bass. Uh, it's been played hard. I bought it in 2007 off of eBay, and it's still the best bass I've ever played, and I have been fortunate enough to play a great many. So I'm, I'm very happy to have this one with me today. With bass amps, I'm always looking for a very particular kind of mid-range content. I don't like too much, but I want it to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, don't, I haven't even looked at what these settings are, actually. This is... It's been really great. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. The one thing that the 50 and the 100 have that the little guy does not is the addition of a blendable distortion mm. circuit. And uh, we, are, we are having a lot of fun with that. The, uh, it's basically kind of taking after the OB-1. Yes, they have an amp called OB-1. Oh. And it's sort of getting after those kind of bass sounds of guys like uh, the most, the, mo the one that comes to mind immediately is Tom Peterson of uh, Cheap Trick, oh. using bass amps and guitar amps to achieve his sound. Of course, playing a 12-string bass, you're going to want something to handle those yeah. upper frequencies and harmonics, and nothing can do it for those kind of pitches like a, a guitar amp. Yeah. There's a lot of content yeah, to deal with. Yeah, that's a lot. A of, lot of content. You can dial anything in from a, a light grit to a full-on fuzz, like Muse, Death From Above, 1979 mm. territory, which is uh, right up there oh. on, the, uh, on the scale. Now the one thing is, of course, with a 100 watt, you get the most features, so you have the addition of a DI out on the 100. Very useful. Yes, and of course, obviously, with the higher wattages come different speaker sizes. You have a 10, a 12, and a 15. Uh, all of them have ported cabs. They all have auxiliary input, so if you want to play along with an MP3 player, or uh, you know your phone is streaming something off of the old Spotify, um, and they also have, and this is really cool, cabinet emulated headphone outs. Um, also, 
Another cool thing on the front end, uh, all the amps have pads. So if your bass is just driving the amp a little too hard and you don't really have a, a compressor, which I, I think most basses should probably have a compressor, you can go ahead and flick that on and you get a little bit of drop in the signal. But I gotta tell you, full features, and not only that, on the 50 and the 100, you have an effects loop. An effects loop. Yes, basis, you can use effects too. Basically, we're gonna run through them all, we're gonna dial in some sounds, and we're just gonna have ourselves a good old time. So why don't we go ahead and start with the little guy. All right, so we are plugged into the Crush 25 right now. Mike, I'm gonna give you the reins for playing right now. And we're going to turn some knobs, we're going to find some sounds, maybe turn this bad boy up a little loud just to see how we can, how loud we can get it and how far can we push it. I think that's a, a good thing to do with mm. little amplifiers mm. personally. Mm. Push and, that uh, envelope. And uh, the microphones that are going to be picking this up are just what's picking up our voice. Uh, this is a rather large room we're in, uh, high ceilings, you know. It's a, it's a big room, but we're gonna see how much of this room we can fill up with it. So uh, I say go for it, man. I really like that. That that sounds really good. And that little bass amps for me, it's always like you push them too far and they let you down. Exactly. You get such a small speaker, you're not really pushing any air, you're not moving any low end. Uh, so many just sound kind of thin and weird. Like I don't know. They all remind me of Gorilla amps from, <laughs> from my buddy's uh, bedroom. But uh, not this one. Uh, no, this, not one, this one. This is a bedroom amp that I could see used in more than just the bedroom. Even in the studio, this could be like a great secret weapon if you want some like grit and uh, you know a lot of people are like double tracking bass anyway or uh, running it through DI and if you just mic this up, I think it's it's gonna be right in that frequency range you it, want for grit. It'll give you um, character. I want to see how loud we can turn this thing up though. Oh yeah, that's a good so question. So let's let's do that. Well, we're gonna turn this thing up and see how far we can go, Mike. Take it away. I gotta say this, we've got it up all the way now. And it's oh, getting, that's a 10? Yeah, that's a 10, oh. and it's getting a little fuzzy. A little bit. But yeah. I like it, I it's like that. That's not bad. It's not gross, it's not imploding on no. itself. No, and, and that's the thing, like you drive a solid state amp too hard and it's just gonna, it's gonna let you down every time. But not this little guy. It's the universal symbol for solid state breakup. So we are plugged <laughs> into the 50 now, Mike is going to be- 50. Mike's going to be doing the playing again this time because that is Ooh. what uh, that's what's Ooh. on your side. Ooh, you know I don't want to I don't want to be crossing. No crosstalk. No, no crosstalk cross talk on this. Demo. No crosstalk here. So basically, what you get when you go to the fifty is you get a little bit more features. You start getting that uh, blendable distortion circuit. You also get the effects loop, and the distortion is foot switchable. So we got a big old honking orange foot switch. That's right. Let's hear that again. That's a foot switch. This is where you really start to feel like, oh yeah, this is a bass amp. 
But the 12 inch speaker, that's something mm. special. Let, let's, let's hear a little bit. That's a bass amp. That is a bass amp. Put another bass. But that 12, man. Hitting the low end. That, that 12 inch speaker, that's that's something different. It's got a little bit more to it than, uh, you know, typically you just get 15s and 10s in bass cabs. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't know, personally for me, 10 inch speakers, even if you have four of them or eight of them, mm -hmm. it just is kind of like, there's something missing. I feel like the 12 is like, it's a nice middle ground and it's something that I think base amp manufacturers should explore a little bit mm. more of. How to use the 12 capably. Yeah, exactly. Well, Orange has definitely done that. I think the mid-range content of this amp uh, is enhanced by the speaker, but we're not losing low end. In fact, I think maybe what we're getting uh, in the trade is focus. Mm. I feel like the amp is very focused yeah. compared to 15 or like a 410 or and what that, have you. That I think uh, is the thing for me because I like a very tight, focused, low end when it like comes tight. to the bass. Yeah, like exactly. Tight. Speaking of tight, let's, uh, let's throw on this distortion. Let's hear a little bit of what that sounds like. Sounds great. Let's do it. part is again solid state this uh, getting that bad rap again solid state distortion just doesn't really doesn't really do it at more than half the time but more than half the time yeah but this is like this is keeping up and this is this is fantastic this is distorting really beautifully nice and smooth very, but gritty and the cool thing is that the EQ affects both sounds so if you really want to you can kind of you know use your uh, mid-range to get kind of like big muff-esque kind of tones as a matter oh, of fact yeah. why don't we why don't we why don't we try for that right now let's get let's get some scoop sounds in here Sound. And you know, like I love that we went for that because I love big muffs on bass. I think oh, that's one of the best sounds absolutely. ever. Absolutely. And we're kind of there. Yeah. What did you do? Did you scoop out the mids a little bit? Yeah, or? we've got the scoop mids. And again, using that frequency knob to just like sweep through and find it. That was huge. That was thunderous. That was that was muff right there. And it held together really well, like better yes. than some, especially the re reissue muffs, uh, sometimes don't hold together quite as well. And this, this just was sonorous and big and clear. Uh, any chord I felt like I was playing was just, it was all represented. It's, it a, wasn't, very, it's a very yeah. powerful distortion circuit and the EQ is very powerful too. Mm -hmm. I think those, the fact that those two components work hand in hand, it just 
you could essentially mm -hmm. use this as a distortion box if you wanted to, if you uh -huh. had like a, a multi-amp setup yeah. or an AB kind of setting. Oh, that's an interesting idea too. If you're using multiple amps, this could be your dirty one and you're not like losing anything by kicking on a drive uh, no. right at the front of your single chain. Right. Oh, that's really, okay. Yeah, I'm on board. I'm there's on board. gear. There's gears turning. There's gears turning. There's ideas churning in in the head. There's and, gear, uh, gears turning. I think it, I think now we're going to uh, turn those gears towards the big guy right behind Ooh. me. So now that we've decided we're not going to talk about food. Yeah, we're not going to talk about food. What we are going to talk about is uh, an amp that has something to do with food. Yes, it is. It is the Orange Crush 100. It is the big bad voodoo daddy of the line. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, how are they able to say Orange Crush, which is a soda brand? Is that brand defunct or are they still around? No, Crush is still around. Okay. That's worth digging into. Maybe it's because Crush has many different fruit flavors and that's why Maybe. they're not getting into trouble. Uh, Orange, could you have your lawyers contact me personally to explain? So, let's check out the 100. Uh, basically, comparatively to the 50, it is almost exactly the same, except we got a 15 inch speaker in here instead of a 12, and the addition of a DI out with a nice little ground lift in case you get oh. any noise. Does this not have a DI out? It's Does only on the 100. Only on the 100. Oh. It is a unique feature to the 100, which uh, I'll go back and forth between the mic signal and the DI signal so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of how that sounds. You want a DI, you better pay up. Exactly. And we're also going to check out the effects loop on this guy. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we checked out the distortion, and the distortion is pretty comparable. I'll go ahead and uh, dial in a little bit of that, and you can hear some of this. Of course, it's going to be a little bit bigger with the bigger speakers and you know it's, it's going to be a little bit different but the spirit carries on it makes you want to move yes it does and i'm terrible at dancing and i'm feeling about about right to cut a rug right now well you know what i mean we'll see after what, i heard that we'll see what happens now that we are going to check out just how cool it is to have an effects loop on a bass amplifier because yes you bassist too can use any and all of those great effects pedals that guitar players and even some keyboard players use. You can use them too. As a matter of fact, I have a little Boss Terra Echo down on the floor, which uh, sounds a little something like uh, this without it. No, not bad. Sounds very nice. It's a very beautiful sound. I'll uh, kick on that little switch to cut some of that bass. And now I will, uh, now I will bring in the Terra Echo. And uh, you can hear how that sounds. <laughs> I feel like I should be watching a movie about whales and maybe deforestation. Wow. So maybe, this is getting, I don't know. This is getting a little heavy. Well. Which I could get heavy if I added some distortion on with that. Yeah. Uh, I think You're I gotta, gonna piss off some fish though if you do that. Well. At fish, the aquarium. Fish don't have any good metal to listen to. for me. Uh, that one was for me. I'm going to keep playing a little bit because uh, I'm enjoying the sound so much. 
I'm gonna get rid of the distortion though, so you guys can hear now the mic versus the DI. Now mm. we, we unfortunately will not be able to hear that, but uh, mm. maybe after we do this, we'll go up into the studio control room and listen to the tracks. So that we makes can... me a bit sad. Yeah, it does make you know, me it does make me a bit sad, you know. Oh well, what um, are you gonna do? A bit sad, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yes, I am doing that via the blend knob. I will uh, go ahead and give you guys a shot of the settings I'm using right now. Did that work? I think it worked. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it worked, and uh, we'll go with a little motorhead now, maybe. Ooh. for quite some time, I've felt like I've really been able to use the distortion as like a tone shaping thing. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to go full on with it because mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite things to do is this, uh, this Squire jazz bass that I have behind me that I have neglected to pick up because uh, I vastly prefer this. Sorry, red jazz bass. Mm -hmm. uh, I vastly prefer the sound of my bass six, but one of the things I love to do is I love to turn off the bridge volume keep the neck pickup completely full up, and use this amp to kind of turn the jazz bass into something that sounds just close, but not quite there, to a P bass. Ooh, he, ooh. I need to hear this. Should I try that? We should try that. We should okay. have a little contrast compare. So yeah, basically what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get this or this to sound a little closer to that. Okay. So yeah, we've got we've got something fairly similar but there's what I've always liked to do with this and with some of the pedals that I've had over the years is take this jazz bass, make it sound like a P bass. Thank you for being my shielding, sir. Being a, a sounding somewhat like a P bass into a, a bit of a pushed SVT. Mm, it's a good sound. Yeah, it's a wonderful sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the distortion circuit to get a, us a little bit of that grit and uh, try to see if I can't cop something a little bit uh, classic punk rock kind of going on. I like you what know? you do. It's, uh, it's kind of what I like as far as like pushing. It's, of course, it's not gonna be 100% similar to an actual precision bass into an actual SVT, but if you need something that is gonna be a good tool amplifier, a good like Swiss Army knife kind of amp, I think this has got a lot of the features that you need 
in order to cop a lot of different tones. So uh, why don't we go with a little bit of the Ramones. yourself a, a pretty good size amplifier you can throw into the back of a, a compact with your with your bass maybe a, a couple pedals you know because everybody needs a tuner a tuner is a pedal now tell me how does this do uh, with a hundred watts solid state in a gig can it keep up with the drummer I actually have some recent experience with that Ooh. which I will detail for you now um, last week we actually played a club in Santa Monica uh, called Rusty Surf Ranch. It's right on the oh, pier. Nice. It's yeah. a good, good little room, uh, but we knew that we weren't expecting it to be like the biggest show ever, mm -hmm. and we were looking to do some experimentation, and one of the things we brought along was the Crust 100. Uh, we ended up going mm -hmm. DI for the, the sound oh, guy, um, and I think that performed fairly well. Everybody mm -hmm. in the audience seemed to think that it sounded really good, but it kept up with a drummer, and a 100 watt guitar head with a 212 nice. cab very very nicely i mm. i heard the bassist loud and clear the entire time through the set i was i was very pleased with it mm. so it, real life real world use it definitely keeps up nice. and it, it's something to keep in mind for when you're you're shopping around for an amplifier so, How do you yeah. feel about the 50 in that same situation? Uh, I don't know if you've 50, had that experience. The 50, I've not had much experience in using it in a, in a live context. Mm -hmm. Just because I know myself playing a 100-watt rocker verb uh, through the Orange 212. Sure, yeah. It's, the bass is going to need... A, I tend to like higher wattage bass amps just because they tend to handle the lower frequencies a bit better. Mm -hmm. And in the context of the music that I do... I like the bass to handle those lower frequencies and those fundamentals uh, personally for me sure. uh, and what I envision as our sound. But at the same time, the 50 has a character that the 100 does not. It's a little bit more crunchy mm -hmm. and it's not quite as, uh, I guess the word I could use is hefty. Um, heft. Yeah, heft. Mm -hmm. It's not got the heft of the 100, but it's got a character that the 100 does not. Even though they're very, very similar amplifiers, they're you know essentially the same thing, just a smaller package and without the the DI out. Mm. But I could see either of them performing pretty well, especially if you mic it up. You know that that's, sure, sure, that's sure. a big thing too. Um, personally, my the most experience I've had with the 50 is playing it at home. Um, I personally, just because I like the distortion circuit so much, I've been using the 50 as kind of like a home practice mm, amp. Nice. Uh, or just, you know, sitting down with a bass and coming up with some bass lines or some parts for songs. I find that that is what I like to use. And most of the time I'm using the, the bass six, um, but I have plugged in the jazz bass to it and it sounds mm. really, really good. But this little guy, I mean, again, it's it's small, but it's very powerful for what it is. It's not it's not as full featured, but if you're just one of those guys, you need a small bass amp just to take care of the fact that I need a bass amp around, and but you need a good sounding one. And hey, it's got a built in tuner. I mean, there are so many things that I can keep saying, and uh, I'm not so sure I want to keep saying too much on the subject, but I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with this entire line, uh, personally. How, how are you feeling about them? Uh, I, I would like an orange amp. Uh, I think, I think I'm really impressed with this. I've had a lot of experience with orange over the years, probably not as much as you, being an artist. Um, but, uh, from, from the old Mad Amp days, uh, up until, like, the Rocker Verb and all of that, like, I've used Orange Amps quite a bit, and I've always been impressed with, uh, the quality of their overdrive. Uh, and so hearing it in a solid-state bass amp, um, identifiably that orange sound, that, like, there's that high-end crispness that's not 
too tinny or piercing, but it's it's there and it's rich and it fills everything out. Yeah. That that just ah oh, gets me Absolute, going. Absolutely. Um, but even without the overdrive, the the basic tone of the amp is really well defined. It holds together great. Like I'm surprised how much I like a 50 watt bass amp. Like to be honest, yeah. Uh, 100 is probably the lowest I would go with most. Uh, and and here I am just in awe of a 12 inch speaker uh, that really kicks and really feels good. And this is the kind of thing like yeah for home. My god, I mean, I probably don't need more than this, but this, this is right up my alley. So yeah. I'm, I'm super into it. Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm super into it. Yeah, I'm super into it too. Super into um, it. I can't say, I think we've said about all we can say for these little guys and these big guys down here. I want to say a big thanks to my good buddy Alex at Orange for sending these our way and letting yeah. us uh, take care of Glenn all those weeks ago and for letting us... Uh, check them out and have a good old time with them and really really use these things i think if you are in the market for a new bass amp but you don't have a lot of money to spend these are definitely a great option to look at if you want more information go ahead check out orangeamps.com and for my good buddy mike i'm sean pierce johnson and i wish you good tone and happy stomping cheers my friends cheers